Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project, this is Tony and today I'm going to do an unboxing and size comparison of the Nokia 800 TUF. Why is this phone so important? Well, that's Nokia's first officially IP68 plus military grade spec phone, which means it's foolproof and it's supposed to survive everything. Um, I'm about to test the durability of this phone in my next video as I did with the 3310, which by the way survived my durability test, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, this phone costs £110 from launch. If you really need a rugged phone, go to Caterpillar. The B35 costs just 65 quid. In Vodafone, uh, in the UK at the moment. But if you insist having a Nokia, look no further. This is the phone to go. Just a quick one. Rugged phones has been around for ages. The Siemens ME45 came out in 2001. Nokia's own 5140 came in 2003, the Siemens M65 came in 2004, I believe, and the Siemens M75 came in 2005, but those phones are pretty much very outdated, as you can see their rubber parts have already perished, so they're not nearly as waterproof as they were back in the day. So, if you rely on something waterproof, you need a new phone. So, let me cut this sticker over here and let me take it out of the box and see what this phone is about, guys. The simple truth is because of the rubber getting deteriorated uh, in a few years time, this phone is not going to last forever, but so far that's as good as it gets. So, let's see what do we have over here, guys. Right, um, okay, it definitely feels sturdy, um, this is kind of a, you know, plastic with some weird rubber coating, stainless steel, brushed aluminum or whatever it is material over here, I really like the exposed bolts. On the side we've got this scratchy bit over here, on this side this is our SIM tray. Um, in case you're wondering about my nails, that's why I grow them to be able <laughs> to open the SIM doors of those phones. And what we are going to get over here in the UK, I can imagine is going to be a single SIM version, uh, but there's always should be a uh, double SIM version. And unfortunately, I'm struggling to take this one out. I guess I'm going to have to poke this little hole over here in order to take it out, which I'm going to do in a second. So the phone itself, man. The buttons are really nice and clicky to be honest with you, they're made of some weird kind of feeling rubber. I'm really not sure if that's glass or if it's a durability test. On top of the phone we've got the flashlight as well as our 3.5mm jack and let's see what's hidden over here. Okay, micro USB charging port. Now, when you pay 120 quid, you expect USB type C. The battery in this beast is only 2100 milliamp hours. Uh, I have no idea how much is has to last uh, 45 days or something like that. Let's see what it says on the box. Uh, waterproof, shockproof, Google Assistant, 4G, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say about the battery. Unfortunately, I can imagine no more than five weeks, considering that the banana phone lasts about four to five days with my usage. Um, but yeah, what else do we have, guys? I really wonder why that why they made this grip over here. I guess it's some sort of a hook where you just hook it up like that and you wear it. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this solution to be honest with you because it adds just extra bulk on the phone. I guess it's drop protection or something like that. By the time this baby boosts, let's see what else do we have in the box, guys. The SIM ejection tool, right, I should have used that. Um, <laughs> what else? USB cable, charger and pretty much that's it. I was about to say no case. But uh, yeah, you're not supposed to use the case on a rugged phone, I can imagine. So let's see what do we have over here. No, the SIM tray was on the side. Mm, let's take out the SIM tray and see if there's the double SIM or the single SIM version, guys. Right. It's a little bit hard to take it out, to be honest with you. I have totally no idea why they made it this hard, but you can't really just pull it from here. You have to have fingernails like mine, but man, that's tough. Taking the SIM tray out of a tough phone is actually tough. Um, ah, come on, it's getting ridiculous now. Right, I finally took it out. 
Uh, well, unfortunately, let me see what do we have. One SIM and one micro SD. The storage of this phone is ridiculously low, guys. I'm not sure how much exactly it is, something like 4 gigabytes. And you've got only 500 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty much nothing. I'm going to choose English over here. English, United Kingdom, Setup Wizard. Skip the Wi-Fi. And let's see what else do we have over here, guys. Um, right. Okay. Next. Okay. Antitev. We hope you never lose your phone. All right, whatever, accept. And pretty much that is it. 2.4 inch LCD screen, um, which I can imagine is like, I don't know, 20 years old, something like that. Um, really nice and simple menus over here, but not much to be honest with you. Let's see what happens if we hold this one. It doesn't activate the touch. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the phone's functions in my full review a little bit later on. But before that, as I said, I'm going to do a durability test. But so far for that video, that was it, guys. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned again for the review and the durability test test of this beast over here so yeah thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one